Hey guys, so this week I actually was looking around for a new portafilter basket for my Bravo machine. And as a lot of you know, the IMS competition basket is actually one of the most recommended baskets out in the coffee world. So I decided to go ahead and bought one and give this a shot. However, the IMS basket is slightly wider than the one that is on the Bravo Barista Express. So it actually won't fit into the group head on your machine without some slight modifications. Now, based on what I read, there's actually two ways to do this. One is by bending the lip on the basket just slightly Slightly so that it curves in and that will allow it to fit into the group head and two is taking a Dremel tool and grind down 0.5 millimeter to 1 millimeter around the entire edge of the basket so I figured this might be a better solution out of the two so I decided to go ahead and give it a try and that is what I'm gonna do in this video Alright guys, so we obviously have the IMS competition basket right here. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, straight out of the box, this basket slip is just going to be slightly too wide for the group head that is on the Bravo Barista Express. If I were to compare it to the stock basket, you will see that the little lip on the edge is just slightly bigger than the stock one. And the other thing worth mentioning is that out of the box, as far as the hole shape and size is concerned, I really cannot tell just by looking at it with the naked eye. However, you can tell that the edge on the IMS basket is just straighter than the one one that is found in the Barista Express. And it should help you in terms of getting a better looking shot out of a bottomless porter filter if that is what you prefer to use. And I should also mention that this basket will really only fit in a bottomless porter filter. As you can see, it is also slightly deeper than the one that's on the stock Barista Express. I have actually tried to fit this inside the stock spotter filter. It will not go in all the way. I mean, it's going to clamp. However, it's going to have a large section that is going to stick out. So just something to keep in mind. So again, if you want to be using the IMS competition basket, it will really work best with a bottomless. As far as the fitment is concerned, this basket in particular, is actually not really made for the bevel machine. So even though it's 50 four millimeter the fit is going to be quite tight I mean it's going to go in but the fit is actually a little bit tighter I mean I don't think it's going to be a huge issue but again something to keep in mind and I'm going to leave the Amazon link to this in the description down below if you want to purchase it just keep in mind it's going to mention that it's not made for the Barista Express and of course that's why we're doing this mod today to try to make it fit for the Bravo Barista Express and really any other Bravo machine with a 54 millimeter basket for that matter okay so before we start a couple of things that we need obviously for this first of all you want to make sure that you wear a safety goggle or something to shield your eye just because there might be some metal shards that might be flying around secondly of course you need your Dremel tool. The bit that we are using today is going to be the stone bit. I've read that some people also have success using the tungsten carbide bit. Uh, however, I don't have that. So the stone bit is supposed to be good for aluminum. So let's hope that this works. Just for an additional level of safety, I'm also going to be just working inside this box. Hopefully this is going to help us trap most of the, um, the, the shards that's going to be flying off the basket. And of course, I don't really do things like this all the time. So, you know, the tools and the technique that I'm using might not be the best tools and technique. So if you one of you guys at home are more handy than I am on things like this, please feel free to leave in the comment section down below on if you think there's a better or safer way to do this. But anyways, this is what I have at home and let's Let's try to make this work. So another good idea to do before we get started is to trace these two baskets together and just basically draw a line on where roughly the cut should be made till. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I have went ahead and drew a rough line around the edge on where I should, you know, stop. But again, if you guys are working on this at home, just make sure that you're checking along the way just to make sure that you don't over grind. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put my glasses on. Let's get started grinding. So the stone bit seems to be uh, working a little bit slower than I would like. So I'm also so I'm changing over to the multi-purpose cutter bit. So this is actually meant to be used for shaving harder metals. So let's see if this works better. Alright, so actually this is going to take a little bit longer than I imagined. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this off camera and I'll come back to you guys with the result once I'm done. Alright guys, so uh, 
So this actually took a very, very long time. I was expecting to finish this in 30 minutes to an hour, but it ended up taking me probably close to four hours. I would say, yeah, it's about just about four hours. Just keep in mind, four hours is actually including the time when um, this small Dremel unit that I have uh, actually overheated and ran out of battery. I gotta wait for it to be charged. And again, just as a reference, this is coming from somebody who actually have absolutely no idea what they're doing. And <laughs> I'm just kind of uh, learning as I, as I go along with this. So anyways, this ended up taking about four hours to get the size to be roughly the same as the stuck Breville. So a couple of tips that I kind of also learned within this time is one, it's a good idea to have a just cold bowl of water next to you because this can actually get very, very hot and it gets a little uncomfortable to hold at times. So it's good to have a bowl of water so that you can dip this in uh, if it gets too hot. Number two, what I ended up using was actually this diamond bit. So the stone bit and the multi-tool bit was actually st still way too slow. And in my kit, they actually had this diamond bit. So I ended up using this and this was probably a lot easier uh, to operate. Well, anyways, as, so as you can see, this is probably not the cleanest job by any means. However, it fits and it seems to be working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the sanding bit and just basically buff it out and to make it so that it's not as uh, sharp along the edges. All right, hopefully this shows up on camera well. This is just buffing one time with the sandpaper buffing bit. So it's actually looking already a lot cleaner than before. So a lot of the sort of the more jagged edges are gone. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go through one more time and buff it with a finer grid and clean it up a bit further. All right, so that looks just about good enough as far as the sanding part is concerned. I'm gonna buff it one more time in the end, but just you know, just something to keep in mind that you know the bit set that I'm using is actually not of a great quality. It's actually quite cheap. <laughs> I kind of just bought this last minute just to work on this. Um, as you can see, just by you know grinding a little bit, it's already ate through most of the uh, the sandpaper bit. But anyways, you know it, it it did its job. Okay, lastly, my tool came with this little wool bit. It's uh it's meant to sort of as a last step buff on the metal. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it through one time. Oh, right, lastly, uh, while I was working on this basket, I kind of scuff up the top a little bit. So I'm just gonna go in uh, and basically with a little bit of polishing compound and I'm gonna try to see if I can shine this back up. Okay, let me go ahead and, and rinse this up real quick. All right guys, so this is pretty much what I ended up with. Before you guys say anything, I know this is not a very uh, clean job. However, I saw this mod and I wanted to try it out. So therefore, I wanted to kind of just show my honest experience doing this with you guys. After the polishing, the edge is actually quite smooth at this point, even though it's not even. And what I really wanted to do was just avoid cutting myself down the line when I'm, you know, removing this basket from the porter filter. And I think I've pretty much done that. So I'm just gonna leave that be. Again, just compared to the original Breville, See, this is pretty much matches up at this current point. Again, it's not perfect. I just tried it on the Bevel Burst Express and it fits. So that's that. So for those of you who are thinking about doing this at home, from my experience, it took about four hours. That is with charging and cooling off the unit and stuff like that. You know, if you guys have a much more heavy duty machine at home, or if you are much more skilled at this than I am, obviously you will be able to do this in a much shorter period of time. The bit that I ended up using was the, the diamond bit finished by buffing it down with, with with a sandpaper bit and a wool with a polishing compound at the end. So this is what I end up getting. Now, one more thing that, that I gotta mention is that when you're working with the Dremel tool, in case if you're like me, who had actually very little experience with these, I would say to take a look at the instruction manual and really follow the recommended uh, RPM uh, for the bit that you're using. Just because from my experience, if you're using the wrong RPM, you might one, end up uh, overheating your unit or two, if the RPM is way too quick, you might end up burning the metal. 
So just a couple of things to keep in mind. Again, just refer to the instruction manual. All right guys, so this is probably the longest time I've ever spent shooting one video, uh, so far at least. However, uh, at least we got it done, so I'm happy about that. And for those of you who are thinking about doing this at home, obviously depending on your skill level, you could take as long as me or you could be much faster. Um, again, just keep in mind the IMS basket might not make a huge difference for you in terms of actual taste. However, it's going to make your bottomless Porta filter shots much easier in terms of getting an even extraction. And one, one thing to keep in mind is that on Amazon when, when I was looking around, it seems like IMS makes two versions for the 54 millimeter size. One of them is the 12 to 18 gram, which is the one that I have right now. The other one is actually an 18 to, uh, to 21 or 22, I forgot. So just pick the one that fits your recipe the most. And for me, that's the 12 to 18. Anyway, so I really hope that you guys find this episode to be helpful. And of course, if you are new here or if you have not subscribed, yet please go ahead and take a moment and hit that subscribe button of course like and share this video if you find it to be helpful that's it for this episode i am gonna go ahead and reward myself with a nice cup of latte at this point bye